Almost all of the items we buy somehow involve plastic. Either the item contains plastic, is shipped in plastic, or is packaged in plastic. Often it's all three. Yet plastic is tremendously damaging to our environment. How do we get plastic out of what we buy? Wonderfill is part of the solution. Every single minute, a city garbage truck of plastic is dumped into the ocean. Every minute, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Why? because we are producing more plastic than any waste management system on the planet could possibly handle. Contrary to what we have been led to believe, over 90% of the plastic we dutifully put in our recycling bins does not get recycled. The history and the mythology of the plastic industry is a mess, but it provides some critical context for how we got here. For that reason, I'd like to take a few minutes to give you a crash course in plastic. The first plastic, called cellulose, was invented in the mid-19th century as an alternative to ivory to make billiard balls. Many took notice because it was the first synthetic material ever used to make a commercial good. Cellulose went on to inspire the development of many other plastics, including bakelite, vinyl, and nylon. During the post-war boom, American manufacturers sought to mass produce goods at a cheaper price. So they shaped and dyed these types of plastic to mimic more expensive materials like wood, ceramics, tortoiseshell, linen, metal, and glass. Many manufacturers began using plastic for packaging and shipping their products as well. This versatile new plastic made cheap by America's oil boom made products more convenient and affordable. This is when the plastic industry shifted away from durable hard plastics to more lightweight disposable plastics. These cheaper materials led to a throwaway culture that didn't really exist before cheap single-use plastics became so ubiquitous. In 1969, the Cuyahoga River in Ohio was so polluted by chemical dumping, it caught on fire and burned for three days. This embarrassed the United States worldwide and spurred the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency. This event was a catalyst for the growing American environmental movement. Then in 1987, another environmental crisis hit the news. The Mobro 4000, a barge filled with over 3000 tons of trash, much of it plastic, left Long Island, New York and wandered up and down the coast of the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico for two months in a desperate search for a dump site. Denied by port after port and state after state, the refuse was so undesirable that both Mexico and Cuba threatened to fire artillery at the barge should it enter their territorial waters and attempt to dock. The incident called attention to our trash problem and damaged plastic's public image. As a result, cities began banning plastic and in response, major oil and petrochemical companies that make plastic, such as DuPont, Chevron, and Exxon, funded a small plastic recycling pilot program in Minnesota. The industry leveraged the program in the media to get the public to believe the industry had listened to them and were trying to solve the problem. But this man, Ronald Liesmer, who helped orchestrate the publicity stunt, later exposed the plastic industry's deception. And to this day, the problem has not been solved. These words became the industry's marketing strategy for plastics. Perception is reality. Even though large-scale recycling of plastics has never been done and isn't actually technologically or economically feasible, the industry knew that all they had to do was make it seem as if it is. This marks the beginning of the most successful greenwashing campaign in history, the chasing arrow symbol on the bottom of plastic packaging. The plastic industry quietly lobbied states to pass laws requiring that this recycling symbol be put on plastics sold in that state. Incredibly, in most states, the recycling centers didn't even know this had happened. Very quickly, well-intentioned consumers began putting the plastic in their recycling bins and buying more plastic, believing it was all being recycled. But they were wrong. From the 1980s until 2018, much of this plastic was being shipped to China. Now that China's stopped buying our plastic waste, recycling centers in the US are in crisis. There is no market for post-consumer plastic, yet recycling centers are still receiving it. And with nowhere to put it, they are at risk of closing down. We've reached a critical point. Plastic is everywhere and we have no place for it. Consumers, businesses, environmental advocates, and governments are looking for a way out. 
Wonderfill has a scalable solution that stops the flow of plastic into the waste stream. Experts in the institutions that research this problem agree. Replacing single-use plastics in supply chains with refill and reuse systems is where we need to start. Major companies such as Unilever are catching on and the demand for refill and reuse technology is rising. Replacing just 20% of single-use plastics is estimated to be a $10 billion business opportunity. To capture this market, Wonderfill has designed a highly scalable refill technology that we need to systematically eliminate single-use plastics from liquid and cream product supply chains. Wonderfill smart refill stations for shampoo, conditioner, soap, and other liquid and cream products is so consumer friendly that it will appeal to all, regardless of whether they are conscious of the environmental issues our product helps solve. We've set out to build an alternative that is better than plastic. Our refill stations look and feel like a beer tap at your favorite brewery. With Wonderfill, you don't need to weigh your empty container. You just swipe your card and fill your reusable bottles. Our smart system calculates the amount of ounces you've dispensed and charges your card automatically, just like a gas station. Stores want convenience, and our smart system has a built-in IoT-enabled inventory tracking system that makes it easier for stores to sell products via Wonderfill than selling products in plastic bottles. Our system tracks and automatically reports product velocity from our machines to our customer's personalized dashboard. Any store employee can go to our dashboard, see how much product they're selling, and know when they'll need to order more. They can review sales analytics that we automatically grab for them. And our smart system also enables us to do remote system health checks and to monitor sales remotely, which is especially useful for the autonomous refill stations we built for our first customer, UC Santa Cruz. UC Santa Cruz seeks to eliminate single-use plastics from campus, and they awarded us grant funding to research, develop, and install two refill stations in September. The entire UC system and many other colleges have similar goals that we are uniquely positioned to help them meet. Ours is the right product at the right time, and we have the right team to bring it to market. The founders of our company are Chief Engineer Shiloh Sachs and myself, the CEO. We also have a marketing campaign strategist based in Portland and a database engineer, a point of sale programmer, computer engineer, mechanical engineer, and a computer architect all working with us in Santa Cruz. We are working closely with a zero waste store in our area to design a refill system for them. Zero waste stores are increasing in popularity, but customers complain that their manual pump-based refill system is strenuous and time consuming. It also requires an additional store staff member to walk people through it. Moreover, with this system, it's difficult to track their profit margins. Our technology solves these problems and takes what is now a six step process and whittles it down to just three. As we market our technology towards universities and low waste stores, we want to make sure that brands that currently distribute in single use plastic bottles understand how our technology can remove unnecessary steps from their supply chain. Take this shampoo supply chain, for example. This is a linear supply chain, meaning that the shampoo producer relies on the extraction of fossil fuels to make the plastic bottles that they then sell to customers. And once the customer is done with the bottle, it is thrown away and likely to remain in the environment for up to 450 years. In these types of supply chains, the producer isn't responsible for where the plastic bottles end up. Producers tend to assume that this would be an expensive logistical nightmare to start taking responsibility for their plastic waste. But with Wonderfill, that does not need to be the case. Wonderfill enables these companies to cut out all of the steps that involve single-use plastic from their supply chain, which actually saves them time and money. With Wonderfill refill stations in stores, the producers can send the large bulk reservoirs of product that they would ordinarily send to a bottling facility directly to distribution centers where they will be sent to stores without any single use plastic packaging. Once the reservoirs meet, reach the store, they will be loaded into the Wonderfill refill stations where customers can easily dispense the product into their own refillable bottles. Once the reservoirs are empty, they will be sent back and refilled by the producers. We are currently working with brands that have already figured out the circular supply chain logistics. 
They're helping us measure the cost savings, increased supply chain efficiency, and plastic and greenhouse gas reductions achieved by this distribution model. We will use this to show other brands why refill and reuse systems can save them money and reduce their carbon footprint. I'm excited to announce that Wonderfill will be featured in a circular economy exhibit in Portland on Alberta Street at the end of August, thanks to We All Rise Consulting. So if you would like to try Wonderfill in person, follow our Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter for details. We are a young team with the vision, skills, and dedication to move this forward. If you represent a grocery store, university, or other place that wants to start phasing out single-use plastics, you can set up a meeting with us on our website to pre-order a Wonderfill. It's no obligation. We would just get the conversation started. As we continue to grow our business, we know we would benefit from adding industry experience to our team. If you are interested in dispensing and point of sale software, how to scale operations for manufacturing hardware, or have experience in this industry, please email us at hello at wonderfill.world. Thank you.